Welcome back to Outside Today. REI gear expert Paul Badalini is here to talk about minimalist running. So Paul, what are we talking about here? What is minimalist running? Minimalist running is essentially running barefoot, going back to your tribal roots, the natural way to run. Okay, and how is that different than traditional styles of running? Well, typically minimalist running, you're simulating barefoot running, mm -hmm. so you're cutting out a lot of excess cushion in traditional running shoes, and that forces you to land on the midfoot and forefoot of your stride. Okay, and is that is that a healthy thing? Is that okay? Is it good for you? It is, actually. Typically what happens is a lot of the small muscles in your feet get developed, become a lot stronger, mm -hmm. along with leg muscles and stride efficiency. Okay, great. Well, if I wanted to get into minimalist running for the first time, what's a good entry shoe? Uh, Typically, the first shoe that people go for is the Vibram Five Fingers. Uh, people first thing notice is the separated yeah, toes. Sure. Uh, it's made from synthetic materials, uh, but pretty much there's no cushion in the shoe, so it forces you to land on the front, the forefoot and midfoot section. Okay. Uh, and there's no cushion at all in the shoe, so just be a little careful when running. Okay, cool. Now, if I didn't want stuff stuck in between my toes, what do you recommend? <laughs> Uh, Merrill makes a trail glove minimalist shoe as okay. well. Uh, same design essentially, except more conservative look. Uh, again, closed toe, nice wide toe box for a nice toe spread for mm -hmm. when you're towing off during your stride. But again, no cushion at all in the shoe, so it's um, midfoot, forefoot strike. So like the, the Vibram, it's, it's got no additional cushioning, but it's a little bit styly and has some room for your toes. A little toes. more conservative. Okay, so what if I, you know, I'm, I'm really attached to my traditional style running shoe, but I, I kind of want to try the minimalist running. What would you recommend? Well, a good transition is the Brooks Pure Series shoes. What they did was they created a whole line of running shoes where they added a little bit of cushion for people who are running on, let's say, the streets of New York, mm. you know, really hitting that concrete hard where there's not a lot of give. This right. provides a lot of protection for uh, ankle, knee, leg joints. Kind of good um, for urban minimalist runners. Exactly. Okay. Uh, they also make a counterpart for the trail runners. Uh, basically, same cushion, same principle, just with a more trail-like tread, so you don't slip around on the trail. Awesome, I love the colors, too. Well, obviously, you have to kind of wear, wear some clothes on the top and bottom, right. too, so what'd you bring with us today? So this is the REI Fleet Skort. Uh, Fleet, for ladies. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, the Skorts are very popular, especially during race day. It's mm. a little more stylish, nice, lightweight, breathable, moisture-wicking fabrics, and has internal compression shorts that make a nice, snug fit. Um, what, so what are we wearing on top? What if it's kind of kind of like a rainy, windy day? What do, you, what do you recommend? The rainy, misty days or the colder weather days uh, to really block the elements. This is the Brook LSD jacket for long, slow distance. Love that color. Uh, Water-resistant fabric, windproof fabric, a stowaway hood so mm. you know your head doesn't get soaked, and also very lightweight and has a stowaway pocket. So what happens is if you need to pack it away, throw it in a duffel, it fits very small. Nice, awesome. Uh, well, a big trend in running right now is actually logging your workout. Um, do you is this a watch that you recommend for you know kind of compiling my metrics? Uh, definitely. This is the latest and greatest from Garmin. This is the Garmin Forerunner 910 XT. Basically, it does your run metrics, uh, distance, calories, pace, and so forth, mm -hmm. all using GPS technology. Also comes with a heart rate monitor as well to keep track of your beats per minute. But also, if you're into swimming or biking, it also does your biking metrics as well, distance, cadence, and your wow. swim metrics, lap count, uh, stroke efficiency, and so forth. So that's like a, that's a really good watch for serious athletes, triathletes, and even like weekend warriors, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. Well, staying hydrated and fueled up is also important. Um, tell me about this this hydration belt. Well, this is the Amphipod hydration belt for individual small squirt bottles. Mm -hmm. You typically want to mix up between your electrolyte drink and water to stay refueled throughout the longer mm -hmm. runs. Um, very lightweight, snugs the hips really well, so it doesn't bounce mm -hmm. when you're running. So, because it's important to drink before, during, and after Correct. all your runs. Uh, now, longer runs, I'm gonna need a little bit of an extra kick, is that right? Correct. Okay. So typically, you want to replenish a lot of the sugar and electrolytes during those longer runs, especially during the hot days. Okay. So you have the Cliff Shot Blocks, which has all natural sugars, electrolytes, and vitamins, along with the Honey Stinger Energy Chews. They help give you the extra kick mm -hmm. and replenish a lot of the essential vitamins and minerals that you need during your run. Okay, and then what about after my workout when I'm all done? After the workout, we have the Cliff Shot Rocks, which is an all-natural uh, protein chew that helps rebuild muscle and, again, refuel a lot of those lost 
vitamins and minerals that you lose during your swim. Awesome. Well, this is all good information, Paul. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. All right, well, still to come on Outside Today, Stephanie Pearson guides us through the 2012 Outside Travel Awards. <laughs>